what are the true causes of aging? It's poor diet and poor lifestyle and stress, right? Well, yeah, but let's actually talk about that a little bit deeper. Welcome back, my friends. My name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today, I am very excited to present this interview I had with Victor Savalowski of Lightwater. Now, all of his information will be linked in the information description, as well as more on the company Lightwater, which he is the CEO of. But we really dove into what causes aging. As I mentioned in the beginning, yes, poor diet, lifestyle, stress, all of those things, absolutely. But what is the internal mechanism? What's actually happening inside of our body when we're aging? We go into that and explain it in a way that is, I believe, simple enough for anyone to understand. Now, again, deuterium plays a huge role in this, so we go into that quite a bit. And I am about six weeks into a deuterium depletion myself. So we'll talk about that in this episode and make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel so you can get a full video. Once I hit that 90 day mark, I will go into it. Now, Victor has offered my listeners a $20 off coupon. If you guys want to try Lightwater, you can use my code YOGI to save $20 off. And that is something that you guys can just check out. There's a lot of information that is on that website that I encourage you to go and read and do your own research. But I really do hope that you guys enjoy this interview. I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is going to be Upgraded Formulas. Now they've actually just provided me with a brand new code for my podcast listeners, which is Yogi12. It will save you 12% off of anything on their website. I'm a huge fan of their magnesium. I take it every single night. I promise that it helps me get my best and deepest sleep. I have several clients that also swear by the upgraded formulas magnesium. One of my clients no longer has restless leg syndrome and absolutely loves it. So you can use that code YOGI12 on the magnesium. I also love their potassium. And getting their hair tissue mineral analysis is absolutely key if you are having issues with your electrolytes, which many of us that do these lifestyle interventions like low carb, keto, fasting, carnivore, we do have to watch out for electrolyte imbalance a little bit more. So make sure you check out Upgraded Formulas. Use my code YOGI12 and get 12% off and enjoy this episode. Please share it, like it, leave me a comment. It helps get the information out to more people. Thanks again for being here and I will talk to you guys again really soon. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back and tuning in today. I am very excited about today's guest. This is Victor with Lightwater. Now, just a little disclaimer, I am about three and a half weeks into my own journey of drinking the Lightwater, which we'll talk about here. But this is one of the reasons I'm super excited to bring you this conversation with Victor because it's been very impactful for me just in the last three and a half weeks. And I'm all about sharing with my listeners what works. So Victor, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Yeah, and if you wouldn't mind just kind of briefly introducing yourself, your history, I know you work with Lightwater now, but you've been on this, I've listened to a lot of podcasts with you in the last few days, but you've been on this like lifelong journey to um, for health and, and you know reverse aging. Could you talk about that just a little bit? Absolutely. Um, it's true. I've been fascinated with aging since I was a kid, you know, just as a I consider myself like a armchair gerontologist, you know, gerontologist, yeah. somebody, somebody that started somebody that studies the mechanisms of aging. And um, so I've been on a journey ever since my uh, um, early 20s, you know, getting to understand everything there is to know about the human body, like, um, I could tell people, you know, we're, we're born, we're born with all the tools. We just don't have the manual. So while we're here, we have to write the manual or find the manual or, or piece it together with glue and bubble gum. You know, I don't know, but, <laughs> but that's what I've been doing. You know, that's, I've just been putting together the human manual for the last, uh, ever since I was conscious of the fact that, that, uh, conscious of things that I wasn't conscious of until I was conscious of them in my early 20s, you know, and that has to that has to do with uh, diet and lifestyle and, and yoga and awareness. 
Yeah. So I'm talking with another yogi here, which is really, I've been teaching yoga for the last 12 years. And I feel like that is what kind of sent me down the path of wanting to learn more and to know more about how we age and our health and all of those things. That's what got me started. I, um, I joined a yoga commune when I was, um, uh, when I moved to San Francisco junior year of college and, wow. um, and I learned, you know, and I got, I got really in, into it, you know, and I, and I went deep with it. Um, Ashtanga yoga, especially. Oh yeah. I did Ashtanga for until I hit 40 and then my body said, mm. <laughs> perhaps those dropbacks, uh, we should relax a little. Yoga, you know, <laughs> yoga, yoga is geared toward the individual, not the individual toward yoga. So, yeah. you know, asana is just one side of it. But uh, I was really, um, I was really fortunate enough to have the right teachers mm -hmm. and to have the ability to learn properly. So I sought out the information that I needed, and and certainly, um, yeah, like the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, you know, Shiva mm -hmm. Samhita, these ancient texts, they're as relevant as they are, they're as relevant yes. today as they were relevant a thousand years ago. Even the Rig Veda, which is the oldest yes. text in existence, is as relevant. If you can understand it, it's as yeah. relevant today as it is at any time because it's a timeless document it's a it's a transmission that happens on a personal level so there are these amazing things to experience on this planet and and uh one of the caveats to do them you have to be healthy yeah <laughs> so so that's why health is so important and uh, ever since i learned that the that the medical establishment didn't have my back you know n nothing really you know allopathic medicine only has your back if you need mechanical work mm -hmm. so um you have to kind of put it together yourself. So that's what I was doing for the last uh, 30 years. Wow. Almost, th almost 30 years. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's another thing that led me down this path of why we're sitting here today is having a child with non-speaking autism and realizing the medical establishment, allopathic medicine was doing nothing for her except offering pills and offering, um, these things that just weren't helping her at all. And anything that's helped her in the last 13 years has been something I've had to find on my own. And uh, she's, you know, yoga and my daughter have been this big part of just wanting to seek and learn more about how the body works and, and how we can live optimally. Absolutely. I mean, allopathy is staying true to their definition of their medicine. The definition of allopathy is to you create an injury to induce healing. Mm -hmm. So that's not always the right approach. Right, exactly. And, and, but that's, that's the predominant, that's the predominant medicine that we have. And it, it's supposed to, you know, and they, and they, uh, they force it as an, as a vehicle to address every little problem. And it's just not. So we have to look at, we have to look at other ways. So when we discover these other ways, um, it's important that we share them because it's just, you know, Everything in nature tries to find the simplest path of least resistance, right? This, to do yes. things in the simplest way possible. So there's simple solutions that exist for complex problems. So if we identify them, we have, we have to share and really understand um, because we, 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 we in, order, in order for us to enjoy life, you know, we have to simplify things, so. Agreed, absolutely agreed. Um, I guess what led you to deuterium? I know that's, <laughs> <laughs> probably a lot of things but how did you get interested in water and deuterium and and what brought you there i was always interested in water um when i when i moved to hawaii in my early 20s i would just mm. go from spring to spring you know with a with a, with a glass jug and then i would you know and that the year after i would come back with instruments you know and measure things and try to get a uh, i had a real, i'm really inquisitive so so um, in 2004, I read an article in Search of the Fountain of Youth, and it talked about uh, deuterium and deuterium to water. It was an article written by a NASA scientist, uh, and it was based on research that he had unearthed, uncovered in um, uh, Eastern Europe. So uh, that, that really hit home immediately because it made sense. It made sense to me on a mechanical level from a, I mean, made sense in every way. And, and um, and I had heard some of these stories kind of growing up because I, I was born in Russia and I came here as a young, as a seven year old to the United States. So um, in Siberia, there's uh, well, basically where this comes from is where it was discovered that, that deuterium is a, 
a biological contaminant um, was, uh, or or even the opposite, that the that the uh, lack of deuterium is actually enhances biological activity. So where this came from is where the, this uh, biophysicists and gerontologists at a, at a university in Siberia, they were uh, studying gerontology in a local population and. And they, they came upon an interesting statistic, and that was these people that were pretty much like Eskimos. You know, they live in a very harsh, cold environment, very little sunlight, uh, pretty much eating, you know, raw meat diet and so forth. Um, they had four times more centenarians than anywhere else in the Soviet republics. And it's a, it's a, it's like 12 time zones or more or something. It's a big, wow. big swath of land. So like, why are these people? Uh, they're not, you know, they're not, they don't have a Mediterranean diet. They're living in harsh Eskimo-like conditions. They have four times more centenarians. And uh, it took them, a, this was a problem that they wanted to solve. And it took them a few years and they, and they honed in on deuterium. And it found out that these people were drinking water there that had 60% less deuterium. And so when they correlated this to other areas and the longevity of other people that, uh, had this in common, and this is the people that have this in common are people that are drinking glacial water um, or very high, very high latitude. It's basically the hydrological cycle dictates how much deuterium is in the water. And for the mo most of the planet, it's about 150 ppm in fresh water and 155.76, which is the ocean. Mm -hmm. So in certain areas, you get water that's slightly less, okay, and go, uh, all the way down to 89 ppm, which is uh, in the Antarctica, but that's the only place. It's a complete anomaly. So if you're like in, if you're in, if you're in the North Pole, it'll be like 105. So, um, so this made this made incredible sense um, to them, but they couldn't explain why. Okay, because all their experiments pointed to experiments with plants, with animals, everything. When you when you take away deuterium, everything is healthier, lives longer grow stronger, et cetera, et cetera. And when you add deuterium, you get the opposite. Uh, in fact, in fact, if you have 30% water with deuterium in it, which isn't, doesn't exist in nature, okay, just you can't, you have to, you'd have to make that. So they did it just for experimental purposes. And you see that on the fifth day, uh, mammals start dying. Okay, yeah. so this is a, so, uh, and I'll explain why this is, this is a problem. So they figured this out and they published this in 1961 and then it was published in English in 1966 and and it's taken 60 years to get to um, where it is now, but the mechanism for why um, this actually in increases longevity and energy in the body wasn't discovered until 2007 by uh, Abdullah Olgun, Dr. Olgun in Turkey, and he was doing work on the mitochondria and so the first thing he looked at was how much deuterium is in there is is in your is in your body is in your blood it's, there's not much in water right statistically it's only 100 doesn't seem like much it's like 150 parts per million you know it's a uh, three drops of hdo in a in a liter of water you know it's not even it's not even pure you know pure heavy water that they use in nuclear power plants that's d2o but most of the heavy water that exists in water is hdo so there's just a there's not much of it. So he figured, okay, how bad can this be? He wanted to understand it. So he looked at the blood plasma and he saw there was four times more deuterium mm -hmm. than the most important biological components of life, you know, glucose, magnesium, potassium, et cetera. So he said, this is really interesting. So what is it doing? Well, when you look at deuterium, what is it? It's just another version of hydrogen. It's an isotope of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the simplest element in nature. It's the first element created. It's also, it's fuel for rockets and it's fuel for our cells, okay? It's what everything is run on, it's hydrogen. A little bit of hydrogen is, is deuterium hydrogen. The only difference between regular hydrogen, which is called protium, and deuterium hydrogen is that there's a neutron in deuterium where there's no neutron in protium. Why is it so appealing to all biological so to all, everything that's living, why is it appealing as rocket fuel? Why is hydrogen so important? Is because it's so simple. It's got a proton and electron, no neutron. Every other element on the periodic table has a neutron, mm. and so does deuterium. But it behaves like hydrogen, therefore it also binds with oxygen to produce water. So this deuterium, because it's got a neutron, it becomes twice the size of a regular 
protium. And this interferes in the production of energy at the mitochondrial level with these motors, these motors that we have called ATP synthase nanomotors. This is phenomenal. When you start researching this, yeah. it, it just, it, it, a whole world opens up to you because we have these little tiny motors that are more efficient than any motor that, that could be created by anything but nature. And these motors produce ATP, which is the fuel that we need to breathe, to eat, to sleep, to live, right? So, and this motors are, they get spun by hydrogen, by proteum, mm. but they only have little spots in them for proteum, not deuterium. So every 15 seconds, you get this twice the size hydrogen coming in and the motor doesn't have a place for it. It's like a square peg in a round hole and it causes it to stutter and jam. Okay, no ATP is produced and you get torque on this motor that's spinning at 9,000 RPM, it starts torquing it. And over time, it causes it to break down and you have, what you have is the membrane that's holding it together, you get leakage. When you start getting leakage between a membrane and a membrane, you start equalizing the amount of energy on both sides and then that, and then that cell dies because no energy is produced. You need the differential of energy between membrane to cause protons to go down a channel. So this is a mechanical problem. This deuterium is purely a mechanical problem. And as you get further in recent history, after 2007, you get, you get people like uh, Dr. Laszlo Boros, who yeah. coined the term deuteronomics. And so he created a science around this, what Dr. Olgun discovered and others discovered, basically saying that, look, here's the Krebs cycle. And the reason it's so complicated that you guys haven't figured out yet is because these are complicated gates to keep deuterium away from the electron transport chain mm. with that motor being at the end of that chain. So it's like our body's trying to keep this deuterium out. In fact, the water that we make inside the mitochondria is 60 to 70% deuterium depleted. So, and this is water that we're trying to recycle for life, right? So things start popping into place, you know, come, but it, take, it took many years for this to get out there. and. And one of the one of the problems that it takes uh, discoveries to uh, to move so slow is because there's no there's nothing to test with like deuterium depleted water. Right. <laughs> Nobody was right. making it, so that's another problem. Um, so these these things move very slow. But now I think now I think they're um, now I think that we've actually taken an active role in promoting uh, this uh, in the marketplace. You know that we can and at the same time supporting the science and the scientists. That are doing the research on this and even and even more documentation as the efficacy of not necessarily deuterium depleted water but the state of being deuterium depleted yes by having your body not 150 ppm in your serum plasma but in the 120s or below right so you're doing things that are um that are mimicking the type of um body that these people that are living in these areas that have deuterium depleted water naturally are experiencing, and even more so because you're adding, you're adding, you're adding other knowledge to it. And uh, so, people, for example, that go and live, scientists that go to the uh, uh, station down there in Antarctica, they experience all kinds of healings. You know, wow. they experience all kinds of, but they don't know why. <laughs> That's eighty nine you know, ppm, right? Yeah, they don't know why because they're <laughs> not they're not concerned with this. You know? Wow. So, so uh, I think they're starting to find out because uh, wow. we've been sharing that with them. But yeah, so, it, but you, not everybody can make it down to Antarctica right. for six months. And I don't know why you'd want to anymore. No. <laughs> but, but so it's a simple biological problem. It's a mechanical issue. And so by removing this contaminant, which has no biological benefit, you're lessening how much of it gets into your energy production pathways. And by doing so, you know, we will we will see if we will see if it sticks. But I'll tell you, when we started this company, we did it on the pure blind faith in the science alone because we didn't have any. We only drank you know enough water for for a week. You know, we didn't have we didn't right. we didn't go through a three month program to deplete deuterium or get any of the long term you know more long term benefits. So we were just going purely on the science, and um, I'm happy to report report that uh, the science has not proven us wrong at all It's actually uh, everything it said it would be it, it it is you know everything that mechanically you can say look this is going to you know theoretically increase your energy by double or, or more and in fact it does at least i feel it and so does everybody else that uh, i wouldn't say everybody else because there are certain anomalies but i would say ubiquitously across the board 
this is what it does. And in fact, another scientist in this uh, deuterium depletion space, uh, Dr. Shamlai out of Hungary, mm. he's the oldest, probably the longest running scientist investigating this on a applied level, right? So instead of just theoretical, this guy is actually from the 90s, been giving it to thousands. He's over, I think over 3,200 case studies in oncology, cancer patients. Uh. So he's been, um, he's been getting people on deuterium depletion since the 90s. And he wrote a book about it called Defeating Cancer. It's 12 bucks. It's on Amazon. It talks about all his protocols. It's a great uh, reference book. But that was written 20 years ago, and he's still going at it. And what he's discovered that people that use this as an adjuvant therapy, right? He's not advocating that this is any kind of a cure or healing or treatment. He's saying this is just an adjuvant therapy. Mm -hmm. It's water, after all, and it, and it depletes your deuterium. So he found an eight time, eight X survivability factor. People, wow. people were survived uh, statistically average of 3000 people. They had an eight X survivability with can with all kinds of cancers and some still alive to this day. So I think what happens is you get that extra bit of energy and that's all we're looking for, right? Our body is yeah. just hungry, starved in fact, for energy. So much so that we're so starved for energy that we should be like the salamander where we should heal by regeneration, mm. right? If somebody cuts off a finger, we should grow it back, but we can't, we don't have the energy. We barely have the energy to repair ourselves to the mechanism of scarring. So you have to take these things into consideration. You know, we don't even have the ability to fully repair ourselves. So we inject, we take our own stem cells out of our body, concentrate them and then inject them back into the point of injury just to, create an environment of more energy to create, to create better healing. So we need to increase the amount of energy we have at the mitochondrial level. If we have, if we uh, hope to have a chance um, of uh, increasing our lifespan, anything of an, any significant nature and overcoming some of the new diseases that we've, that we've been, we've been hit with, you know, for, yeah. because of environmental pollution and so forth and so on. Yeah. I mean, anecdotally, I'll say, I'm about three and a half weeks in, and I think it was right at the three week mark of doing, drinking the light water, doing deuterium depletion. I already do keto. I already fast. Yeah, I think I did a 48 hour fast the first week um, that I was doing the depletion and I already do these things. I've been doing them for years now, but I woke up with bouncing out of bed at 5:30. I try to get sunrise every single morning. It's a non-negotiable for me that my eyes bear will look at the sun every morning. Um, and I usually will just sit out on the front porch and I face east. And, but I've been every morning, like we're walking, you know, walking for 90 minutes, just unbounded energy. And the other thing is my uh, metabolism, you know, I'm 42. So I oh, yeah. noticed my metabolism slowed down in my mid thirties that I just all of a sudden was struggling more uh, with extra weight. And I am not kidding you. I have just been dropping the weight the last week and I'm not calorie restricting. I'm not dieting. Oh, I'm not exercising more. Yeah. My metabolism has sped up. And so oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. I mean, th and this is just after three weeks. So everything you're saying, I'm sitting here nodding. I'm like, yeah, it makes so much sense. No, I don't want to brag, but my metabolism, it's like I'm 16 again. I could eat like uh, 3,000 <laughs> calories and be hungry again, you know, in like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exciting. And, it's, and, and yeah, I think what people don't realize and what I didn't really realize until I started studying is this going back to a few things you were saying about those nanometers and uh, the nanomotors and, and our uh, mitochondria function. It's like once you hit 25, those motors start to slow down more and more. And so one thing that kind of frustrates me is I work with people, a lot of people in their forties, fifties and beyond, and they're trying to compare themselves to people in their twenties and copy what those people are doing. And I'm like, you do realize you don't have the same mitochondrial function as those people, correct? And yeah, they, know, people it's, don't it's understand actually, how it works. It's actually, it's, I hate to say, but it's actually worse. It's not that they just slow down. It's that is that they disappear. Oh. They go away. They die. That you know, if you're the difference between somebody that's 12 years old and 80 years old is uh, let's let's take a look at a, a muscle cell. You know, you might find in a 12 year old that he's got like a hundred thousand mitochondria. Um, these are little individual factories that are producing ATP, and then 
by the time that person is old, you're looking at maybe, you know, if you're less than, less than a thousand. So, you know, it's just you don't have those factories in the cell anymore. These are little factories that are swimming around in your cell and they produce energy. You know, the less factories you have, the less energy you have. It's just, it's just like, uh, it's just like us. We close our fact, we close our factories. We don't have any energy. We got to get it from somewhere else. Right. So, um, that's the problem. That's the problem. And this is cumulative. That's the other problem. This is cumulative. So I think what you experience, what other people experience is they go to, a, they get to a level where, um, they go back in time. You, know, yeah. you get to, you go to a level, you feel like, oh, I remember this. This is, feels like I'm a different age. And the reason it feels like that and you tune into that is because you're going to a level of deuterium that you had at a younger age. Okay. Cause mm-hmm. this is, this is, this is just cumulative and, and people accumulate. Uh, if you're unhealthy, I mean, you could have high deuterium levels when you're a, when you're a baby, when you're a child. It's just there's there's a lot of factors um, involved in this, but primarily you're dealing with metabolism and mitochondrial health. Yeah, and I feel like so many of our issues are based around mitochondrial health, and we try to pinpoint this, that, or the other. But if you really drill it down to where the origination of the the disorder, disease, whatever you want to call it, is coming from it's the health of the mitochondria. Do you the big, the big buzzword used to be antioxidants and now, yes. it's, now it's mitochondrial health. Mito, yeah. Mitogenesis, I would say, because that is actually term, the term that, that's the sexy term, making yeah. mitochondria. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and mitogenesis is something that we all need more of because the more mitochondria we have, the more actual youth we have, you know, in spite yeah. of despite whatever sun damage we have or whatever. I mean, it's a mitochondrial, mitochondrial health really defines your energy and therefore defines your aging. Wow. So, so you mentioned, and it's a Siberian tribe, correct? I know that's, a, this is on your website, the Lightwater website, which you'll be you wanna, Yeah, there. there's a, I wrote a, I wrote a really exhaustive history on there. It's a fun read. You can hear, you can uh, hear, I guess if you read it, you can hear it in your head and you read it to yourself, but <laughs> Um, yeah, no, it's a great history. The Yakutians um, and some other populations there that uh, have this traditionally, um, you know. And what's interesting is uh, it's generational, multi generational. So you, you see people that are having um, babies, you know, up in until their, their 60s, 60s, right? Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you actually see this in uh, certain tribes in northern India as well um, that are uh, live in these areas, these areas that have uh, glacial water that's in the upper 120s, lower 130 range, you know, every, every point matters in, when it comes to deuterium depletion. Yeah. So, and one of the things that you mentioned is that our water, you know, a lot of people have asked me, I have a private membership group and I share a lot of stuff with my members and they all want to know, well, did you test your deuterium levels before you started depletion? And I was like, no, I, I probably would have been at like 150. I mean, and that's, I, really? I'm going to test in a, in a few where weeks. Do you, where do you live? I live in Atlanta. Yeah, it's probably 150. Now, yeah. here's something interesting. People that, let's say you have, let's say your water is 150 or, or if you live in like Colorado in certain places, it's down, it's like 140 or a little lower. Um, if you are, let's say you test at 150, okay, your body is just, you're just normal, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, if you test higher, if you test 153, 154, 155, you can you can pr- pretty much be rest assured you have some kind of chronic illness. Wow. You're, okay. You're, okay. And if you test slightly lower, that means you're doing great. Your body is actually in top shape. It's probably very keto adapted, and you're actually you're actually able to l- lower slightly the deuterium content in your body compared to the baseline that you're in- ingesting. So that's. That that does happen as well. Very healthy people, athletes, you know, biohackers, essentially. But you're never going to drop it too far. Um, right. and that's the problem. Yeah, I think I've heard you on interviews with different people and you know different biohackers. Maybe they were like in the upper 140s, and very disappointed by that. And just being told, well, essentially, if you want to get it lower than that, you're going to have to actually do <laughs> deuterium depletion, right? Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's so it's so easy because the water is available. Uh, there's not much of it, but but there right. is enough for for the people that are drinking it now, and that's good. So uh, you know, I tried to do this when I was uh, you know when I first in the early 2000s. You know, I first found out about deuterium depletion, and uh, there's there are different techniques out there. Like you can freeze water because deuterium yes. water that's 
water that's slightly heavier freezes slightly, you know, at a higher temperature. You can if that turns to ice first, then you pull that off and you get a little deuterium free water. Where turns out it doesn't work. No, actually, if you do, you could do it twenty times. Okay, you could do it twenty times in your fridge. Remove it, do it, blah blah blah, and you'll get one ppm. Okay. Oh, so I went to Russia and saw how they really do it. I, I, I realized I was, you know, I was like nowhere near the ballpark. I was like, I was like across the ocean. So there's some real hardcore science to this because it's at the, it's, you know, hydrogen is the smallest thing in the, in the universe. This is not something easy to remove. No standard filtration technology, reverse osmosis, standard distillation, whatever you find out there, it's not going to remove deuterium. So, so we've done it. And uh, not only us, there's actually uh, a few more people. Uh, there's mm -hmm. Romania, Hungary, I think out of China, they're doing it now too. But it's very difficult. And, and so there, it, it means that there's not a lot of it and it, and it, and it becomes kind of pricey. So, um, and that's the, only, that's, that's the only barrier. I mean, any, everybody should be drinking water that's reduced in deuterium, whether it's slightly or, or, or more, but this is, a, this is a health strategy unlike any other. It's not about putting something in your body. It's about some, taking something out. Yeah. So, and it actually becomes affordable when you, when you consider that, um, you know, you really like a, a delta of just, of just 16%, you know, is, is going to have this profound effect. So, but get to back, get back to what I was saying earlier, that they, they found this multi-generational effect, mm. people having, uh, People having children later in life, but also, but also multi-generationally. When you look at, uh, especially the mouse studies, you see that you see that you know by the third, fourth generation, you've got incredibly much healthier, much bigger uh, animals, and much more virile animals than you do the control group, and that's incredible. So, so over time, so these people, you know, that living in these um, areas, it's not a fair comparison to you and I because they've been doing this multi-generational. So that's why we say that's why we say you know you you got you should drink a water that's like 120 ppm you know you could go you can go lower as well it just gets harder to maintain it gets more expensive but but if you get down to 120 and you maintain that and you do this over a long period of time you're going to see you're going to see tremendous benefit um the couple of years that i've been doing this now myself i can i can give you my own testimonial of this but the yeah. testimonials we have we don't even share them we don't put them on the site Sometimes we send an email saying, you know, this person reported this or that. They're just too good. Yeah. Why don't you guys put them up there? Is it FDA that you have to yeah, deal yeah, with? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just, we're just, they're too, they're, um, I, I, you know, we sell this on the science alone, you know, but the testimonials, right. testimonials would, would, um, they'd sell, they would, they would sell out overnight. But yeah, the FDA, you know, we're not, we're not, um, we're, we're not uh, treating anything. We're not curing right. anything. We're just saying, look, like get your deuterium levels lower and you could do it with water. You know, it's just a simple process known as hydrogen exchange. If you, if you consume water throughout the day that has less deuterium than the water in your body, you're going to release some. Right. And, yeah. and, um, and that's, that's it. And you do this over cum and, and, and the other thing about when it comes to the FDA, I, I don't think anybody would be concerned with, uh, somebody that's you know doesn't have enough for more than a couple thousand people <laughs> right <laughs> absolutely but the aware but the awareness of this is what's most important you know that the awareness that this is the primary mechanism that's happening in your body that is determining I, i'm not i'm not even gonna say the primary because i'm gonna get a bunch of a bunch of blowback but i would say it's one of the it's one of the mechanisms that determine how we age you know it's one of the markers of aging and this, this, you can't dispute this, and you can't dispute this on a mechanical level. And so we had a conference devoted to this deuterium depletion summit. And, uh, we did the first one in the U.S., and we had ten speakers. You know, all the scientists I mentioned, most of them were were there. And uh, and now there's been four four actual uh, conferences in Hungary. You know, since the uh, uh, since the uh, mid 2000s, I think 2009 was the first one. So there's some serious science devoted to this. But what, what is so amazing to me is it's a huge oversight in biology. I mean, people, people at most universities, they just, they just, it's a big oversight. They look at, they look at hydrogen and they look at deuterium and they go, okay, hydrogen. But, right. But clearly there's a difference at the biological level. So in time, people at departments, at, 
at universities uh, in molecular biology will understand this and go, yes, you are absolutely correct. This, the, the, because it's heavier, it will do a lot of damage all the way down to distorting the shape of DNA and which causes mutations in, in your DNA. And look at what mutations cause. Right. They cause age. We're a copy of a copy of a copy of a Xerox of a Xerox of a Xerox. And if your toner is down, if your paper is not aligned, if you're, if, <laughs> I mean, there's so many things that could go yeah. wrong. So we're a copy of a copy of a copy. So it's like you have to have integrity in how that DNA is copied over and over and over. This is happening like as I as I even uttered the words, it's happened a thousand times. So wow. Can you talk about some of the things that you have seen just with some of the people that you, like with different health conditions, um, maybe like cancer or if you'd rather talk about some of the stuff that you're seeing with athletes um, that you guys have been able to to do with deuterium depletion, uh, I I was just in I was just at our factory in uh, Russia in July, and I came back with some studies they did there uh, for athletes and physical performance. So they did two studies. Uh, one was on one was on they did a control group of six people. Uh, so basically, six people could drink as much deuterium depleted water as they want. Six people were rationed and six people didn't get any. And they did this with a group of uh, athletes and a group of regular people. Mm -hmm. And they found with both groups that after 30 days of deuterium depletion and more so with those that were able to consume as much deuterium depleted water as they wanted, they found upwards of, of let's see, how do I say this? A uh, increase in the amount of, in, the, in their ability to utilize oxygen. So after 30 days of deuterium depletion, they needed half they needed half the amount of oxygen to perform the same amount of work, which is oh. phenomenal. And you could see this people that are people that um, high altitude climbers, right? Alpine climbers. If they if they go through a keto strategy, mm -hmm. if they hang out at base camp long enough to deplete the deuterium levels, because the water at base camp is much lower, at least in at least in the Himalayas, then they could summit. Then they can go to the summit without oxygen. Just like the Sherpas, the Sherpas that live there, they go to the summit without oxygen because you need half the amount of half the amount of oxygen to perform the same amount of work. You just become a super efficient machine. Wow. So we want to recreate these studies in the US and we actually want to promote this for athletic use because I think it I think this will change the game. Um, you couldn't you couldn't uh, call it doping because there's nothing to dope. You're it's water. Removing, <laughs> you're just removing some deuterium. So they can't say, oh well. You can't have lower deuterium levels. You know, it's you're cheating if your deuterium levels are lower than 140. You know, like really? <laughs> what if I what if I represent what if I represent Antarctica? You know, like, right. I mean, so yeah. So this is I think this is be be profound because it puts it pushes human pushes the limit of what of what humans can do, or, or actually it pushes it to the theoretical limit because we all know what the theoretical limit of the nanomotor is. It's just, can you actually get to 9,000 RPM, you know, perfect mm. translation. Can, so, so there's, we can push some of these things. And then, and then what else determines uh, being able to push human performance? Well, how much mitochondria, mitogenesis, how much mitogenesis do you, or how much mitochondria do you have in that cell and your ability to utilize oxygen. Okay. Mm. So these are really important and uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm 49 years old and I feel like I took, a couple decades off so it's it's exciting to me personally and it's exciting furthermore be able to share this with people and so you asked about some of the testimonials and i would say uh sleep is a common one you mm. know sleep improvement i mean like what are the things i kind of see across the board like you mentioned you know uh more energy better sleep higher metabolism this is th this is explained by the science yep so especially the metabolism part. Yeah. So um, the sleep is a little bit harder to understand, but of course you can understand it because, you know, even the early studies in the 60s and even the studies that my partners in Russia did, they did stress studies, you know, stress studies on mice. And you see you become, they, they subjected these poor creatures to all kinds of, all kinds of stresses. And you see that when you're deuterium depleted, you can withstand stress a lot mm -hmm. better than if you're not. And this also applies to radio protection. I wrote another article that ah. I encourage everyone to read that talks about its radio protective qualities, that if we ever hope to get to Mars and successfully live there longer than six months, because the deuterium levels are seven to eight times what uh, they have here on wow. Earth, well, you're basically gonna expire you know, very quickly because you're just gonna slow down and shut down. You're gonna be susceptible to more 
to more uh, diseases like cancers. So uh, cancer, cancer is a metabolic disease. Okay? Yes. So you're going to be susceptible to more metabolic problems. So, so we have to uh, address this issue if we ever hope to, uh, to get off this planet and successfully go to other places. So radioprotective benefits is another benefit of being deuterium depleted. So all these studies exist. Most of them are Eastern European, some are Chinese, uh, some are, some are American based, very little, um, but it's across the board. You could, you could, you could basically follow the science and you go, there's enough here to, to make a compelling argument that, that, that more resources should be devoted toward uh, understanding deuterium depletion for a larger population. Even, even that's a statistical analysis, which the Russians did of the, of the US continent, because this data is publicly available through all the tap water in the United States, they could have a statistical correlation showing that people that lived in places that have lower deuterium have longer lifespan and are less susceptible to diseases like uh, depression and diabetes and so forth than people that live in areas, uh, whether they're urban centers or not, of areas that have water that's more uh, closer to the what the ocean is, 150 ppm. So this is... Um, this is really something. It's really exciting. It is exciting. And, you know, what kind of sent me down this rabbit hole was talking with Dr. Jack Cruz. I don't know if you're familiar with him at of all, course. but yeah. yeah, he, he and I were talking and he's like, well, where do you live? And I'm like, Atlanta. And he says, you're just getting assaulted all the time by EMF. And, you know, my job, what I do is I'm on a computer, I'm doing social media. I have, I'm constantly, it's stress, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily view living in a city as a stressful thing other than there's like lots of people and activity, but what our bodies have to deal with and what that does to our mitochondrial health. And he said, you know, what I would tell you to do is start drinking deuterium depleted water in order to counterbalance yep, these absolutely. stresses that are coming in because they are aging you, whether you believe it or not, this is what we're dealing with with society as a whole is we're being aged by EMFs and poor lifestyle and our food and all this. He's like, so to counterbalance that, you really need to pay attention to your water. And I'd highly recommend you start drinking some deuterium depleted water. And I was like, you have to become a <laughs> stress management superstar in the day yep. in the age we live in because, yeah. because uh, we have more positive ion stress, uh, more EMF, more, um, more environmental stress, you know, not to mention we pick up other people's energies, you know, our, our auras yeah. don't stop here. I mean, our auras are out here, so we pick up everybody. You know, if you ever, have you ever noticed how much easier and peaceful it is at night? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everybody's asleep with their, right. with their frantic, you know, beta waves. So, so yeah. uh, we have stress coming from all sides. I, you know, when I, when I really noticed this is when I went sailing in, in Hawaii and we went out like way, out for days and days away from land, middle of the Pacific, and you notice your 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 endocrine system and all your all your um, all your glandular system just opening up, like in like opening up to a point where they were like where they were like a scared little child hiding in the corner somewhere mm -hmm. before, you know. And now yeah. everything's just expanding and opening up, and you really see you really experience yourself as a whole different type of human than this one that's constantly bombarded by. Um, by stress, geopathic stress and other stresses that we're uh, um, bombarded with on land, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah, there's so much to really consider. And I've tried, you know, for the last 12 years, I have been as a yoga teacher trying to help others. And, you know, I have my own meditation practice. I, I do Vedic meditation. I do twice a day and um, it's immensely helpful. But even with all of that, I still need... <laughs> you know, more to kind of combat everything that's around me. Um, it's, this is a great, this is a great solution. Yeah. And this is a, it's a fantastic, yeah. fantastic way to do it for yourself. I mean, uh, it's just, you should see my partner, Robert Slovak. Oh yes. He's, I've heard a lot of his work and he, he's in his mid seventies, right? He's 76 and he's as energetic as anybody in there, you know, at, at any, at any age, honestly, is any age you take a teenager. He's just the guys you can't, you know, you can't. And in fact, uh, did his bone, he did his bone density scan. He's the doctor said, uh, this is, this is the highest bone density I've ever seen of anybody, whether it's, wow. whether, whether it's a 15 year old or a 50 year old, you know, you've got the highest bone. This is a guy in the seventies 
Now, this has to do with uh, King Tone. You know, he's the first. Oh, he's, yeah. yeah. Was, that's on my list of things to talk about. Yeah, he's the original importer of King Tone into the United States. Okay. He's the first one that brought it over here, so he understands the benefits, saved his life. And, yeah. uh, and that's just a sim another simple intervention, really foundational. I've been doing it three times a day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we came out we came out of the ocean, so in order for us to survive on the o on land, we have to take the ocean. We had to take the ocean with us. That's what Rene Quinton, that's his quote. That's yeah. what he that's that's what he astute what's that's what he so astutely uh, figured out that uh, we need the uh, we need the minerals we don't we're not getting and they and they're they're yeah, right yeah. there. They're right in the ocean, but not everywhere in the ocean. You have to get them from a specific place. Right. And so this is a 120 year old product that is so easy. That everybody should be doing that. That, uh, you know, thing is, we're, we're, we're given so many band-aids. Yeah. But we have to just we have to look we have to look deeper. We have to look for the actual source of something, you know, yeah. look to go upstream for the upstream solution and that upstream solution. Once you get that, you don't need you don't need the band-aids anymore. <laughs> right. Absolutely. That's the next thing I wanted to talk about is deuterium in food because, you know, this is people I don't think people really understand how the foods that they eat are also going to be influencing those deuterium levels as well, right? Well, we traditionally uh we are keto adapted or humans humans primarily we evolved as as keto adapted um animals and what I, what I mean by that is that we can we can go for long periods of time fasting you know mm -hmm. without, actually actually it, it's beneficial actually it's actually good for you but but we 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 went a long times between meals so we don't need as much as we think we do right so this whole modern notion of three meals a day and and all this carbohydrate loading you know carbohydrates are loaded with deuterium because yes. that's it's nature's strategy to load the carbs and to deplete the fats. So fats provide more energy anyway. You get four times more ATP produced from a ketone body than you do from glucose. So it's just more efficient to be uh, to get your to get your calories, uh, get your to get your uh, primary bulk of your energy from from ketogenic foods. And so basically. Uh, as a yogi, you know, you know, in, in yoga, it says that uh, the yogi eats once a day, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, householder eats twice a day, the sick person eats three times a day, and a crazy person eats four times a day. This is an ancient yoga text, thousands of years old. Yes. Yeah, um, I went on to I went to a meditation retreat in Bali that was 10 days. And Every, everyone thought I was crazy because I fasted because I flew from Atlanta to Bali is 24 hours. I fasted all the way there. Right. Because I, I wanted to not have to deal with a 12 hour time difference as heavily. It's, yeah. Yeah. You didn't want to get impacted as bad. Right. But yeah. Jumped in the water as soon as I got there, you know, as quickly as I could. And while I was there, you know, I ate very light, very, very light, um, and fasted on the way home. And I was, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, you're going on a retreat. Let's talk about the food. And for me, meditation and yoga, all of those things are so much more enhanced when I'm fasting, when I'm in a ketogenic state and Absolutely. it's, it's remarkable. You know, the meditating for eight, 10 hours a day is what I did. I did a rounding retreat and, uh, it was, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Everything was so vibrant. I mean, I'm in Bali, so how could it not be? But most of the time I was there, I was in a ketogenic state. I was fasting. Oh, and so uh, nice. you got that humid air and it's so warm. Yes. And nice. It's like, uh, I, I said, it's like uh, Miami when you step off the plane with incense. That's how I <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to steal that one from you. That's great. Yeah, so I, that's... you know, I find that I, I like to do dry fasts and uh, oh, like, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, because the metabolic water. Yes. So, so but even like by day three, I've done I've done oh. six days. Wow. And uh, I don't know people okay. have actually done more than me. But I, even at six days, I felt like I can go longer. But you actually, you know, you're, you're, you're losing a lot of you're losing a lot of weight, not muscle, but you're losing still losing a lot of weight. But what I by day three, everything is so like your body has gotten so efficient, like everything is like every, every breath, every step is calculated, right? Because you're just yeah. doing, 
so meditation is easy. It's instant. Oh yeah. Because it's the e- because it's the easy default. You just instantly go into meditation with effortless. It's amazing. And so by like by like day four, day five, everything, every moment is you're in this meditative state. So for now, I, I, I encourage anybody to just try this. Uh, try this because it's a it, it's a pattern interrupt and it's a great way to to not even not even struggle to get into meditation because your body just releases everything just is like you yeah. buy in, your mind just instantly wants to just go go to go to you know go to delta or go to go to go to theta yeah the thing with the dry fasting now i haven't done a ton of it um to put that out there but the dry fasting i have done i've only done 24 hours that's the max i've gone but it was the easiest 24 hours sure. and I was terrified, you know, cause you read, all, you read about how terrible it can be and what it does, this and the other, but I've done water fasting. I've done a seven day water fast before, um, which was had its own difficulties, but just that 24 hour dry fast was a million times easier than any 24 hour water fast I've done before. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, easier too they say that every day of dry fasting equals three days of water fasting yeah so it's definitely easier to me because i just say nothing you know right it's, it's like water is a temptation it's like okay water because it's like everything's a trigger right you know? yeah. so i'm trying i'm trying to work on mental uh i'm trying to re i'm trying to rewire things in the brain so so in order to rewire things in the brain you have to realize that you, you have to you have to just uh not act upon triggers right. so you have to interrupt that pattern and that right. and that's part of this practice as well so it's not only has physiological benefit but i think uh has brain benefit yeah and it just going back to that whole um metabolic water uh i guess idea or just the way that it is our fat makes metabolic water correct and that's correct. a way that correct. we determine correct. so for every so for every liter of fat that you burn you produce about a kilo of metabolic water mm. so if you, that that so it basically explains the reason why people go keto or fast is for deuterium depletion you know that's right. the the end goal of fasting is deuterium depletion right do you think that's you know and i've theorized about this quite a bit why some people that go on even a carnivore diet, because I think beef, it has to be grass fed beef is like 130 PPM, right? Somewhere around there. Do you think it depends? That's it, depends. it depends where, um, you know, you're looking at, yeah, you're looking a lot of, a lot of beef is uh, given is grain finished. Usually mm. that grain is uh, soy or corn, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's high in omega six. So you're going to find a lot of hidden deuterium there. Certainly, if you get some grass fed or young, or if you're eating veal, you know, it's a young meat, you know, it's, it's going to have a lot less deuterium. So the older the animal, the more the deuterium, right? Gotcha. Yeah. So we can't just say beef has this, but let's say we've got a young, you know, <laughs> younger grass fed. You're eating, you're eating veal. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, sure, grass fed. Sure. Yeah. But also on the same kind of thread, people doing a ketogenic diet. Do you think a lot of the benefits that they're getting are simply deuterium depletion? Uh, absolutely. I mean, not, but not simply. I mean, I would say, yeah. I would say, I would say that's the, prof that's a super profound benefit. I, I think that, I think that, um, you know, AGEs, glycation end products, you know, this is a, another, another subject. I mean, the more, the, the more I, you got to eat the diet you're genetically predisposed to. Otherwise, you're swimming upstream. Okay, yeah. and there might be there might be something in your genetic deep down from Atlantis that allows you to you know eat sunflower sprouts. I should be one to talk. I grow I grow them. You know, so maybe right. <laughs> yeah. Know, I got I got I got I got a bunch of sprouts growing right now. So no, there are these. You can you just have to have a scientific approach. So a scientific approach tells you, you know, you bet you have basic requirements. All the food that you eat. It's going to break down to proteum, to hydrogen. That's right. what your body's run on. It's hydrogen, okay? Plus mineral. Your, what do you? What does your body burn? All right, it's going to burn. It's going to burn. It's going to burn your minerals. You know, for fuel. It's mm -hmm. going to burn. It's the, there's complex things happening in your body, even all the way to um, atomic transmutation, which is little talked about. So you're going to need to replenish your minerals. Mm -hmm. You can't digest. You can't create. You can't create amino acids. There's amino acids you can't create, so you have to get them. 
uh, from nature, from food. Okay, there's other things that are essential, essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, essential minerals, trace elements. So, and then, and then, and then whatever food source you can give yourself that doesn't, it's not, you know, just like a car engine. Okay, it's gonna get. It's if you give it the bad, if you give it the wrong fuel, it's gonna get gunked up with what carbon. Same thing with us. Everything's everything's attached to a carbon. That carbon's gonna get processed. We process that carbon out by breathing it out. Carbon dioxide. Take oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. Right. right. Carbon. Carbon's a problem. We gotta yeah. get rid of it. So so um, how marvelous when you're drinking deuterium depleted water because you're putting something in that's deuterium depleted. But doesn't have it's not attached to a carbon even the food that you burn is going to be attached to a carbon same thing with like hydrogen supplementation you could breathe hydrogen you can you could uh get the little hydrogen pills you get a hydrogen generator whatever molecular hydrogen you get in your body it's like free energy right. free fuel so you have to look at how our bodies work how they run and then you look at our Gen then you look at our genetics because everybody's genetics is slightly different you know some are more adaptable to some things and some to others for example it's people we 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 make ourselves adaptable to things over many generations so you might have a predisposition to one thing that i don't have a predisposition to mm -hmm. certainly we can retrain ourselves through epigenetics and uh, things like dry fasting you want to have a complete and total reset of your metabolism that'll do it but there's things we're genetically predisposed to. So, um, and, but one thing we're genetically predisposed to ubiquitously, all of us is, you know, a high fat, a higher fat diet and less carbohydrates. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one for a lot of people because we're so, uh, ingrained, you know, in our culture to have the processed foods and the carbohydrates and you know, it's tough. I have a 13 year old with non-speaking autism. And that's one of the things I changed for her before she was doing anything else. When she was 16 months, when she first was diagnosed is we took out all the processed foods. And it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Yeah. It will change. It's changing human genetics because you yeah. just look, you look at the, you go to, you go to places and you see, you know, like, uh, uh, um, like Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to say that, but you go to yeah. some of these places and you see people and you go, these are not people that you didn't yeah. have this type of genetic manifesting on the planet, you know, a few generations ago. And that's because you didn't have, you didn't have hydrogenated fats. You didn't have some of these processed foods. You didn't have some of these mo molecules that are in the food that didn't exist now. And you can see it because it's mutating. It's mutating genetics. Yeah. And, uh, and it's almost like, uh, you know, it's, it's the opposite of what somebody would want. You know, it's actually yeah. making you, it's actually making you more susceptible to disease, more susceptible to, to, to a pharmaceutical intervention and more problems in your genome, more mutations. And what we want to do is have less mutations and, and, um, processed foods are enemy in that yeah. regard. Yeah. And they're super, super high in deuterium, right? high in deuterium high in macromolecules that your body has a hard time processing or recognizing in the first place mm -hmm. and these macromolecules they they destroy the delicate balance that that uh, that exists i mean we're like for example like pigments right you have these cells inside your gut called enterochromaffin cells they produce serotonin you know so we know serotonin is so important right. for your brain and even for your gut for your peristaltic action and anything and but they're very sensitive to being stained right they're they're uh pterochromaffin they 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 react to, they react to pigment so you can you can just stain them out of existence with just with just artificial colors not even knowing it destroy your gut destroy wow. and you know you, everything health starts in the gut so yes. destroy the gut it's going to affect your brain organs everything so so these are little known things you know nobody's going to we're not going to announce this on the nightly news and say, be careful, don't, don't eat, don't eat things with artificial colors because it'll destroy your enterochromaffin cells. No, you're not going to get that. You're not going to get that warning. You know, it's not no. coming. No, I mean, my daughter is like the mirror of if it's bad for you, she's going to let you know. I mean, she's <clears throat> just very energetically sensitive. She told, she does um, spelling to communicate. So she, we didn't know this until she was about nine. She knows everything, but she spells. And so she tells us that she sees different colors on different people 
and different mm. energy. Yeah. Different energy waves off of different people and hears and sees things that, that we don't see. Um, but the one thing about her is if she eats something that's highly processed or has a food dye in it, <clears throat> she's uncontrollable for a couple days. I mean, she's get inconsolable crying. Um, and it's like, no, we, we definitely are not going to have these foods uh, around. That's let's kryptonite. Uh, but yeah, I don't. You can tune in. You can tune into the consciousness of what you're eating and see if it's right for you or not. That's, yeah. a, that's for sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy, but people just, you know, they you know, don't when, necessarily want to believe it. In yoga practice, if you, if you do any, if you do any kind of uh, Udiana Banda you know, oh, or, yeah. any kind of, or any kind of no, Nauli, yeah. you know, you, you always know if you ate, if you oh, eat yeah. something that you, you can't. Yeah. That was the thing with Ashtanga of having to be, um, you know, at the Shala every morning. It was like your practice is a mirror of the rest of your lifestyle of what, what you're eating. And yeah, you it'll can't, affect your practice. Yeah. You, yeah. You can't, you can't wake up before sunrise and practice every day and do that type of a practice. If you've been, um, eating a bunch of crap or drinking or having a poor lifestyle, you, you're, you're not going to be able to sustain the practice. And so I think, yeah, that's, so yeah, everybody, everybody should, uh, at one point in their life, try to practice some vigorous yoga because you're going to see, that, you're going to see that it demands, it demands more of you. And, and when you demand, and then it's good because you demand more of yourself and that, and that, and that ultimately is for your own benefit. Yeah. I always recommend to my students, you know, if you can, do a year of Ashtanga yoga. If you could find a real Shala teacher, do it. Um, six because, days a week. <laughs> yeah, six days a week, <laughs> except moon days. And so, you're, you'll really learn a lot about yourself and your body and how your lifestyle is working out for you. you yeah, know? it's the uh, it's, uh, yoga chikitsa, the first uh, you know, year, year and a half. Yep, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Well, jumping back to the water just a little bit, you know, if someone wanted to do this, if they wanted to, they're, they're listening and they're like, okay, this sounds amazing. I want to see how this is going to help for me. How would they go about doing this? I know you guys have the 5 PPM, the 10 PPM water. Um, how would they go about de depleting their deuterium? Uh, I would start with the most economical thing, and that's the 10 ppm in plastic. Yeah, we we make the glass available because some people prefer glass, but there yeah. really is just not much of a difference because it's very, the plastic is very safe. It doesn't doesn't leach. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we ship everything. We ship everything temperature control. You know, but the thing is, that's the most economical thing. So you you buy. Um, most people need about two cases per month, which is uh, 16 liters. Okay. So that's 16 liters. You can you can make that. You can split that four times. You know, so you can get quite a lot more water out of it because it's 10 ppm. So if you if you mix it half and half with the with whatever water you want to use, you get 80 ppm. Okay. But if you mix it, but if you but if you have four parts, four to one, meaning one part 10 ppm, uh, four parts whatever water you drink, assuming it's about 150, you're going to get 120 ppm mm. or 120 to 122, and that's that's a great way to start because Every day you're going to you're going to deplete a little deuterium. Mm -hmm. So if you drink, let's say if you drink 80 ppm, you're you're not going to you're not every day. There's just a limit to what your body is just going to deplete. So Got it. Unless you're like, you know, gung ho like some people are. They'll they'll do the sauna twice a day. They'll drink tons of water. They'll you know eat all fat. Then yeah, you'll you'll drop maybe you know one and a half two points a day. But most people will drop half a ppm to one ppm a day. Maybe okay. some less. You know. So, so, and then you just get down to that, get down to the 120 range, feel what that's like, and then decide, oh, maybe I want to maintain this. Maybe I want to go lower, but the bulk, the bulk of that benefit is in that first, is in that first Delta of the, those, those first uh, 20 to 30 points from 150. That's where the, that's where the, that, that right there is because, you know, people ask, well, wait a second, our, my, we've had mitochondria in our bodies for 1.4 billion years. Haven't we figured this out? It's like, yeah, we put on, we have mechanisms to try to keep deuterium out and 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 we evolved i think with that level about 120 you know 120 we can manage so right. at 120 you that's where we want to be we've we, we even i mean if you look at if you look at 100,000 years ago we had more areas on the planet that had that kind of water 
And if you go back 50 million years ago, you, you see this snapshot of the, of the water back then, which is Antarctica, 89 ppm, and you start wondering, you know, is this the reason why you have these ferns that are five stories tall and these you know, dinosaurs that are massive? It's because, yeah, not only the gravity was different, but also the deuterium problem. Even today, you see the largest uh, mammal in the world, which is the blue whale, its strategy is deuterium depletion. It lives, it hangs out in near Antarctica and drinks the runoff. Ah. And, then, and then fat, and then same thing with the humpback. It goes from Alaska. What's in Alaska? Well, they're in the in the summertime. They're they're hanging out by the glaciers, drinking drinking fresh water that's coming off of those right. Melt all the glacial melt. Then they fast for six months in Hawaii. They give birth and they fast. So they have a co totally deuterium depletion keto strategy, completely. Wow. And they're wow. and you know the blue whales, the largest you know, humpback whales, they're also very big, and they're also the longest lived. I think blue whale lives into the hundreds of years. So, wow. so this is um, this is something that I think where our body is adapted already to being in a lower deuterium uh, environment in the one twenties, and the sooner we go down there, the the more we will optimize our own biology. Is there any advantage to? I mean, I guess you basically just said you can't really deplete faster than a couple points a day. Like if somebody just bought the five just do a, PPM. Just do a, a solid depletion, just the nonstop. I've, yeah. I've talked to people that have done it, you know, and, and uh, there's no harm in it. But but uh, uh, in this case, I'd say slow and steady wins the race because um, you want, you know, linear, right? Like the sun doesn't come up in the morning like this. Uh, you know, right. it's, up, it's, up, it's up, it's a little bit, you know, it's just, it's gradual. Everything is just, First you hear the bird singing and it gets lighter. And then, you know, it's like nobody swifts, flips the switch on and off all of a sudden. So right. I like the gradual approach. Um, some biohackers might like the, the wrathful awakening, you know? <laughs> it's, <fine>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more pricey though, if you just try to buy the 5 PPM and only drink that, then that's- well, the five, You know, the 5 PPM is something we did because we could, you know, nobody else has that, nobody else can make it. And it's like the purest, rarest water on the planet, but there's not much difference between the five and the 10. Not, wow. not when it comes to what's gonna happen internally. Okay. You know, if you combine five PPM with uh, one to one, you'll get 77. And if you combine 10 one to one, you'll get 80. So it's not, we just did it because it's just, we could, cause we could, it's like right. a bragging kind <laughs> of thing. Gotcha. So someone would, you know, not necessarily need to test beforehand because most of us, you know, probably hanging out around 150, maybe give or take five points. Um, then how long should they drink the water, do the depletion before they test again? 90 days. 90 days. At, okay. at least, at least give yourself 90 days. You could test before 60 yeah. days. Yeah. But give yourself 90 days. Right now we're doing an experiment where we're testing somebody, I think, every day just oh, to wow. see what the actual what the actual de depletion is it's and it and it fluctuates like uh if i go if i go uh uh travel for you know a week and i don't have water or something i come back i'll just i'll just go more aggressive on it just to get back to you know where yeah. i want to be. and i kind of know in my body because I, I went down all the way in the low 80s and oh, wow it's it's hard to maintain uh it is it is a lot of it's it's a lot of energy you know but like they say with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to be, it's a, it's good to be grounded, you know, and, and, and have something to do with that energy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's, it's, and, and, and for some people that, that may be, um, they may need that, you know, as a, as a, uh, uh, health intervention, as a, as a strategy for, um, long-term survival, but, yeah, but yeah. again, yeah, slow and steady wins the race. You'll get there, get there in a month or two. What's the hurry. Right. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And you know, one of the things I've heard also, I don't know if you have opinion on this, people have said, don't try to get down super, super low deuterium deplete, because what if, you know, years from now you do have cancer, or you have a health issue, then you have nowhere to go. Um, I don't know if there's any validity well, well, that, to that or. Yeah, well, no, where that comes from is from Dr. Shumlai. And he said, and he said that uh, what, what he observed is that, let's say you change the internal terrain, your bioterrain, mm -hmm. deuterium depletion being part of one of the biomarkers in your bioterrain. Um, let's say the, the cancer has to have, it starts to get used to the new bioterrain, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And just as it starts getting used to the new deteriorative level, you drop it even further. Right. You're stressing the cancer, you know, and in, 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 in its ability to uh, uh, to reproduce. So, so that's the reasoning behind that. Got um, it. Yeah. The the that, that's why it's good. That's why the linear thing is good. So so you know, if you go, you've got somewhere to go to now. Remember, your your mitochondria, the water inside your cells, is seventy percent depleted already. Mm. So, um, I think you know when you have more energy open up in your body, it, it it manifests in different ways. I mean, I've seen people like some people have they're they're poor methylators. You know, all of a sudden yes. they become, all of a sudden they become normal methylators, and they and then all those detox pathways open up. You know, so uh. so. You, we react we react differently to, to energy you know yeah. the way i reacted because i'm already i'm already pretty healthy is um is i just have a lot more, i'm a lot more impervious to stress you know i could I sleep deeper faster i just more i'm just sharper quicker i mean everything is that's that's kind of like fine-tuning you know but everything yeah. on the blood work everything is in the green so that's what we want we want everything we want to go we want to go get all our markers looked at you know, and, and see everything in the green. Say, okay, clean bill of health, keep doing what you're doing. You know, we don't want to be in this state where we're constantly chasing health. You know, and when we get into, so many people have find that like, like uh, the, the being a health seeker or the pursuit of healing as a lifestyle, you know? Yeah. Like just get the healing done already and move on with your life, you know? Yeah, there's so much more. And that's what I've found just that I, want to learn more, you know, it's like things are more open to me. Now I want to learn more about uh, the world around me. I want to read more instead of just kind of myopically focused on food and nutrition. And for the longest time, that's, that's all I life, listen to. It's a life sustaining energy. It's not like when people think, talk about energy, they think, Oh, it's coffee energy or caffeine energy or or, uh, um, you know, I woke up in the morning just feeling good one day energy. No, it's like really at so much deeper. It's like a, a, a much deeper level in that. And then when you have that, it's a it's an incredible foundational anchor, you know, of of, of internal almost subconscious confidence. You know, the body has right. confidence that it can do things, you know, whereas, right. whereas we we're, we're we're driven by our subconscious. Subconscious is come almost like our guardian angel in a sense that tries to keep us out of trouble and and when, when you're and when you have more 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 mitochondrial energy you're you're you know you're you're willing to live life a little fuller you know whether that means taking some more risks or or um pushing yourself a little differently you know this is a complex topic and we and because as we get older we just we lo we lose things gradually right so it yeah. doesn't as as bad as it if it was overnight you know like a car wreck it just it's just every year it's like one percent of, of all your functions you know cardiovascular yep. biological mental you know whatever metabolic and it's at, at one percent it's like it's like looking at a hour hand of a clock move you know you don't you don't see it move until you look away and then look back at it yeah so, so this things happen are happening gradually so every day you have this have this ability to ask yourself well and be honest with yourself because you have no other choice because it's yourself say, did I age today or did I, did I youth a little today, you know, or did I, yeah. did I just maintain where I'm at today? And yeah. most days you're like, oh my God, I aged today. It took, it took out, you know, this day years off my life. <laughs> you know, but, but someday imagine those days you have, you say, wow, I, this day, I felt like this day actually added life to me. You know, yeah. how often could you say that? This yeah. day actually gave me more life. Wow. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's it's what amazing. we want. That's what we want. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and we, we have we we do experience things like that on, on on many on different levels, emotional levels, you know, like a child being born, you know, a child graduating high school, you know, some things that happen that give us emotional energy feel like we actually added, you know, because that's vibration, that's energy. And so we're, we're these complex beings that are that need energy that's that's physical and that we need energy that's not physical as well. So um, so but it's a good thing. It's a good thing to take care of the body. You know, that's, yeah. that's, why, that's, that's really my selfish desire be, behind all of this was I wanted to just be healthy for myself. And as yeah. soon as you're healthy for yourself, you can go, okay, I'm, I have, I, I can share this, 
You know, yes. I can repeat this. I can I can actually stand behind and say and 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 boldly proclaim that hey, this I believe this works. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I feel like I've <laughs> could just sit here and talk all day, but I guess one question to just kind of sure. wrap with: uh, Are there any health conditions or situations where you would say deuterium depletion is not a good idea? <laughs> I haven't thought of I haven't thought of one yet. Um, okay. But since you say that, I would say if you if you're just going to dabble in it, don't do it. Mm. Because it's yeah. a lifestyle cho choice, and yeah, even you know even the studies that uh, that I've seen even show like if you did it once one week a month, it still shows biological benefit. So wow. even there, that there is even a short term of deuterium depletion has some longer term benefit clearly not forever but but if you're just going to dabble in it what you know you, you you're gonna you're gonna go down spend money and then you're gonna not maintain you're gonna go back up and and you know the people it's interesting the people that say oh i don't i i haven't felt anything they're the ones that call after you know a month being away from it they go i, I want to get back on this because i feel i feel less energy now, but, but you said, well, hey, you said you didn't feel anything on it. Well, maybe you're just not in tune, but certainly when you take the energy away, you feel it. Yeah. So if you're just going to dabble in it, you know, consider it because it's a, it's a, it's a commitment. It's a financial commitment. It's a, uh, it's a lifestyle commitment. And um, so, yeah, but if you're serious and you understand what it is, then just do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, where can people find you? Where can they get the light water? What's the best way to follow this work? Drinklightwater.com is uh, our main website. It's uh, lightwater is spelled L-I-T-E-W-A-T-E-R. So that's drinklightwater.com. And then we also have our summit website. Uh, it's a deuterium depletion summit. We also have a resource website that I put up called uh, deuteriumdepletion.org. It uh, should be working again, but it has all this has all the studies on there. It's like uh, I think oh, awesome. 50, everything I could find from everywhere, whether any language that has to do with this, I put it on there. And then uh, we also have deuteriumtest.com, so you can test yourself for deuterium saliva or your or your water. We could test for. And uh, this is a uh, so, but the easiest way to start is just go to drinklightwater.com. And uh, read as much, read as, read everything, read the FAQ, read the article, take your time, because it's going to take time yeah. for, your, for your deuterium, go in this, go into this intelligently, you know, um, you know, get educated on what this is. And some people don't need a lot of education. They just, just, they just like, need some friend tell them do this and <laughs> look what it did for me. And they, you know, I mean, I, I see people that, just, you know, go, Hey, what are you doing? You know, not to me, but but uh, to other to uh, uh, other people that that they see if they've seen a transformation, you know, it's like, what did you do? Just drink, just started drinking some water, depleted your deuterium, and everything else works well because um, it will. You know, it's amazing what happens when you start increasing your metabolism. Just that one little, just that one little thing alone. Yeah. Has a yeah. has a deep benefit. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here and talking with me today. This has been. You're welcome. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. And I'll link everything below so everyone can find this. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to chat again in the future for sure as I continue to deplete. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank Thanks you.